fam and welcome to the bad place. I'm kidding, we're not actually in the bad place but it definitely feels like we are with everything going on in the world. So I hope that you are keeping yourself safe, um, that your families are doing okay and that you are doing whatever you can to keep yourself sane and somewhat anxiety free. There's a lot going on in India right now especially with the current Covid crisis so if you can check out the description down below where I have listed out a couple of or a few uh, charities that I think are doing great work so if you can donate to them financially then great if not then donate your social media spaces and uh, talk about them and tell people who can donate to them financially um, to donate to them because we all just need to band together and help each other out. So there are many coping mechanisms for dealing with a situation like this where we are cooped up inside our houses and not allowed to do much. Um, I personally have been binge watching the lights out of Criminal Minds and that has been amazing. Serial killers. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, but apart from that, there are books. So I am here today to give you some recommendations for books that you can read when everything is going to shit. Hey, <laughs> you see what I did there? The following 10 books are very, very different to each other. Um, but I've done that on purpose so that at least one of them maybe will pique your interest because I do realize that not everyone has the same sort of reading taste or want the same sort of things while... We are going through stuff like this so um, check it out and hopefully one of them work. The first book that I would like to recommend to you is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh, by Douglas Adams and this is actually not just one book but like an entire series. Um, the second one is actually my favorite which is Restaurant at the End of the Universe. Um, so anyway this series is just one of my like most favorite series. I love this so much. It fills me up with so much happiness and joy and like laughs and it's just so good and uh, to explain what exactly it is let me uh, try to tell you what the plot is. So essentially we follow Arthur Dent and his best friend Fort Prefect. Fort Prefect turns out to be an alien and he rescues Arthur Dent when the earth is going to get demolished for a bypass. Uh, like a interdimensional like galactic bypass um, and then they hitchhike onto another spaceship and then they have all of these sort of adventures uh, which is insane and so much fun and trust me I'm not much of a sci-fi like reader but this was just oh my god so good it's just so much of Rai like humor and randomness that like it'll just take you to a completely different world um, and that's why I think that this would be so so good for this time right now. The audiobooks are also excellent. The first one is narrated by Stephen Fry and the second one is narrated by Martin Freeman who was an actor in the movie adaptation. Um, so definitely check those out as well. Uh, they are really really good um, and this is Excellent. Since we are in space, I thought that I would recommend to you another series that I love and that is the Saga series by Brian Vaughan and Fiona Staples. This is a graphic novel series that are um, have various volumes uh, and I have read only four of them but I am in love. They are very very expensive so like if anyone feels like rich enough to buy me like the fifth volume and sixth volume and all of that it's all in like I have a wish list so if you want to buy it for me you can but that's not the point the point was me telling you <laughs> what the series is about and essentially it is this beautiful uh kind of gory um and definitely like PG-18 sort of uh, graphic novel uh, where you see these two people um, who are from two different worlds. So there's Alana and there's Marco and they fall in love. Um, these two worlds are like warring. So they were soldiers for these two different worlds and they fall in love and they have a child and both of these worlds governments as well as other people are trying to like kill them and so they're after them and we basically get to know about their story um, and also the stories of these other people who are like trying to kill them um, and why I love this book and this series so much is because one the illustrations and just the storylines are amazing but also it just feels like 
you're reading a movie like there are these, these cuts that happen in between where like you're you're following one storyline and then suddenly you, there's this other storyline that comes in and it's just so fast paced and amazing and consuming um and just so believable and and just i loved each and every one of the graphic novels i read and trust me they will be like mini movies in your head um so yeah definitely recommend although just remember it is a little graphic um there's not too much of like blood i mean i wasn't faced by the blood at least even though there is but like there is like uh, sex stuff and all so just keep that in mind for the third one we come back down to earth for less by andrew sean greer um this is a really fun comical uh book but also full of heart um and it basically talks about arthur less who is like the sort of failed writer of sorts and he has just written his book but he's turning 50 um and his ex lover has invited him for his wedding um and he doesn't want to go for the wedding but they also have a lot of common friends so he doesn't want to say no i'm not going to come because it's embarrassing but he does also doesn't want to go because like it'll be embarrassing so instead he says he's going to be out of town um but he doesn't really have any place to go so he basically opens up his mail and sees all of these like things that have invited him for various different things so he goes from um san francisco i think to from where he originally is to like new york to mexico to morocco to um india to japan to like a bunch of places and he essentially has all of these thoughts and conversations and all of that with himself but also the people around him um and it's just really really nice um i found it just so endearing and and lovely um and just such a wonderful read so i think that this would be a great read for you not only in terms of just like being in Arthur Less's head but also like a nice travel log sort of thing um so yeah so less by andrew sean greer talking about disaster main characters i have my fourth recommendation which is the extraordinaries by tj clune um this book i read last year and i just fell in love with it is so cute it made me laugh out loud and this is actually a young adult fantasy sort of novel which is not something that i usually go for i am not that sort of person but this just like i loved it so much so basically we follow this boy called nick bell who lives in nova city which is a city where like there are these two superheroes so there is shadow star who is the superhero and there's a super villain whose name is pyrostorm and he writes fan fiction about them because he is in love with shadow star um but he's also slightly maybe in love with his best friend whose name is seth gray um and essentially we follow him um and his story and his journey um and essentially his thing is that he wants to make himself extraordinary because the superheroes are extraordinaries um and we basically follow his journey and and what he tries to do and how he interacts with his friends and his um <laughs> parents like his father um it's just very 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 nice i really loved the um connections that he has with every single person in this book um just everyone has like this very fleshed out sort of character and all of them were just super lovely and lovable um i just loved every single character in this book um and there is a sequel that is going to come out in july that i cannot wait to read um and i definitely definitely recommend uh <laughs> there were just some very lol worthy moments as well as cute heart wrenching beautiful things and it was just very well written very fast paced as well uh definitely recommend i don't know if you are single like i am and are deprived of touch and love but i also gravitate towards romance novels during this time um so one of the romance novels that i would like to recommend to you is the hating game by sally thorn uh this is in no way the best romance novel that i have read but i think that it will do its job during this time um one because of generally like it was a cute story and two it's fast paced and you go through it fast and i really enjoyed it uh but essentially we follow two people a guy and a girl i'm forgetting their names right now so forgive me i read it a while back uh who work in this publishing house and they both um are like basically the secretaries or like the executive assistants of the two heads of them and they are both competing with each other for a promotion but 
they also have like vibes uh, but they also like hate each other but there are also vibes so you see that like tension that happens and that tension is just immaculate there is a scene in a lift in an elevator that like i don't think i will ever forget um, but stuff like that it's it's great it's not like pg 18 sort of stuff it's cute it's nice um not too like sexy but still like very good in terms of the romance <laughs> so anyway that is my recommendation the hating game but i would also recommend that you check out my friend purabi at the bookish feelings um on instagram and on twitter and just like a bunch of places um where she talks about the romance genre a lot and she's just my person who i go to so yeah definitely check her out i will link her down below in the description Apart from romance, another genre that I go to is thriller, mystery, crime and there are a lot of books that I can definitely recommend. However, for this video, I would like to recommend The Thursday Murder Club just because of the fun, cute vibes. Um, and this basically follows 70 year olds trying to solve a murder. Um, so there are these 4 to 5 70 year olds who live in this retirement village in the UK and they have this thing called the Thursday Murder Club because one of their friends used to be like a detective um, and now she's in a coma but all of her like unsolved cases she still has like the files and stuff so they just generally like to go through the files but then what happens is that there is an actual murder that takes place um, close to them and they know who this person is and they set out to figure out who's done the murdering and it is just so cute it is like <laughs> i've actually done like a vlog on this so you can check that vlog out if you want to but it's like basically if you miss your grandparents you should definitely like read this book <laughs> because like there is like a lady who writes in her diary and then she like goes on onto these weird tangents which you know like how grandmothers just somehow like somehow they start talking about something else and like about like an apple pie that they made and we are just like god just get to the point so it's like that but in a book <laughs> but it's done like it's very enduring and very sweet um so yeah definitely um that would be one of my recommendations for you to check out thursday murder club by richard Oseman. My next recommendation is also mysterious but in a like pop up sort of way and that is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke uh, and this book was one of my favourites of 2020. I read this towards the very end of December and I read it all in one shot. I could not keep it down. It was just so weird but so engaging. Uh, but essentially we follow this guy called Piranesi who is stuck in like this labyrinth of sorts. That's his world. It is this world full of like uh, columns and hallways and statues and random tides that come in. And it essentially kind of like in my head, I was imagining like the British Museum of Natural History, I think, or history or something like that. I will put up images here. Uh, but yeah, that's what I was thinking of, like a big, large museum with like lots of levels. And it was just really like this fantastical world. So he lives there, but he also tells you about his life there. Um, and what he ends up doing and how he meets the other which is another inhabitant of this labyrinth that he's in um, and how they start discussing things and and uh, there's more that goes on uh, which I cannot tell you about but the more you read the more you realize that there's something off with this place and with the people and with like there's something wrong and and it's just it's that feeling in you um that just starts building and building and building and building and in the end you get to know what actually it is and all of that sort of stuff but i just found this to be such a engaging brilliant read what an amazing job in terms of describing the atmosphere and just fully immersing you in it um so yeah definitely um check this out also it is just very pretty a book the next book I want to recommend to you is uh, one of the most famous books in the world and that is The Little Prince uh, by the author which I will not pronounce his name because I will butcher it and then you will make fun of me. But this is a book that is uh, beloved. It is supposedly a children's book but I feel like it can be read by everyone and I feel like this book it needs to be read or reread during this time because it just uh, gives you a lot of hope and gives you a lot of like wisdom and like tidbits that you can take from it um essentially it is 
this book where you follow this little boy who has crashed into like the desert um, and he then starts telling you um, and the narrator about his life and all his adventures that he's had and all the things that he sort of learned during this time. Um, it is very 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 simple but just a wonderful read um, and it's great for a reread because you will always take something different from it each time you read it um, and yeah definitely definitely recommend the next one is a little bit of an oddball but uh, I love it and that is Slapstick or Lonesome No More by Kurt Vonnegut. I read this last year during I think in July and it really helped me um, so I think it might uh, work for you as well but essentially this book is a very weird one to explain but we are following the king of Manhattan who used to be the last president of the United States um, and essentially we, they live in this world where there aren't too many people left in this world because of this virus but trust me they don't really talk about the virus too much it's not like triggering or anything in any way uh, but it essentially is him talking about uh, his life and and what that was like and him growing up um and he especially talks about like his sister that he had um and talks about like his relationship and the themes of this book are essentially about loneliness and finding yourself some companions um and it's just the joy of having um people and family and and uh people who understand you and stuff like that it's just uh it's written in a really weird way but if you can take those like things those little nuggets out of the book um i think that it would be really really helpful and just it's it's a really nice short read uh but i really loved it the last book that i want to recommend to you is uh one of my favorite books of all time but i do want to say that it is a little difficult to get into um intermediate levels perhaps um but it is ultimately very very fulfilling and that is the elegance of the hedgehog by muriel barbary um muriel barbary is a philosophy professor um from france and she just sprinkles a lot of philosophy a lot of highbrow pop culture as well through this um and it is just a joy to read um to understand all of these various things that she has to say through it uh but essentially in terms of the plot we follow two perspectives we follow this one lady named renee who is a concierge at this very big famous um expensive uh building in Paris and she is very very smart um, and very very cultured but she doesn't want to show people that side of her so people think that she watches trashy TV but in reality she's actually consuming like a uh, highbrow Russian literature or like Japanese literature or like whatever um, so that's her and then the second perspective that we get is of Paloma who is a 12 year old who lives in that building um, and she too is very very smart uh, but she doesn't want to show people her smartness because she doesn't want to get singled out by people um, and she basically is just observing the world um, and she realizes that yo you know what like this is not it um, on my 13th birthday I'm going to end my life and I am going to end like this building so she wants to burn her house down <laughs> because that's just who she is uh, but essentially this book we get to see like her thoughts and her perspectives as well as Renee's um, and then we see how both of them start becoming friends and come into each other's lives and how there's another person who also comes into their lives um, and then all of the thoughts that they share together um, and all the perspectives that they have and it is just very very lovely um, heartwarming uh, thought inducing uh, just a lot of stuff it is a book that you should take slow and and read and just like take it in as it goes um, but definitely a really really fulfilling book uh, I would definitely recommend and yeah so those are the 10 book recommendations that I have for you right now for like this time that we are in um, I hope that at least one of them uh, piques your interest and that you um, read it and you love it um, do let me know which one that is and if you have any other recommendations please do um, comment down below and let me know what it is um, otherwise I hope that you are doing okay uh, keep safe keep yourself sane and I will see you in my next video bye